Hello everyone, in this short video, uh, we're going to talk about how the GPT models work. But before we get that, let's talk about how general uh, generative models work. So at the very high level, the way they work is that they get n tokens in and they produce one token out. So this is a very simple idea if you know what a token is. <laughs> so let's find out what a token is. So in the case of OpenAI, a token is really a short sequence of letters. So for example, uh, a token can be a whole word, for example, the word we or need, uh, because those words are short and they're very commonly used. But a token can also be a part of a word. So for example, the word anthropomorphize uh, takes three tokens because it's a very long word that is not very commonly used. Uh, and so this is just how OpenAI uh, does uh, how, how the tokenizer in OpenAI works. And you can go play with it in this URL in the slide. You can enter any text you want and you can see how OpenAI would break up your text into tokens. So this is how they do it, but it's not necessarily how all tokens are done. So there's many ways to tokenize uh, text. So let's think a little bit about it. You could on one end of the spectrum uh, tokenize text by letter. This would be like the simplest way, right? So each letter could be a token. This would be good, except, you know, it'd certainly be simple to implement, except you'd have a lot of tokens for, for a very short sentence. And these language models generally have a limit of how many tokens that they can, they can take in. So it's not a very good idea to use more tokens than you need, right? So with that in mind, so why don't we do just the, the other extreme? Let's say each word could be a token. Well, that, that would be good because you could use less tokens for the same amount of text, but um, these models need to keep a list of all tokens that they, that they consider. And as you can imagine, it's a little bit hard to keep a list of every word that exists, right? So for that reason, OpenAI settled us on something in the middle. So each word is a few letters. And it seems like these days, most tokenizers that you see from other companies do something similar, even though they may have certain differences in how they're implemented. Okay, so now we know what a token is. Let's go back to our, uh, to our uh, diagram and let's now understand how language models work. So now you understand that um, they take n tokens in, meaning it could be a few words, it could be a sentence, a few paragraphs, a whole page. It really depends on the size of the model and how many tokens it supports. Uh, and then it produces one token out, meaning a word or a part of a word. So it's pretty simple, but you may you may be thinking, well, I worked with ChatGPT and I certainly don't just get one token out, right? You get a bunch of tokens out, you get a lot of text out. And that's because this idea uh, gets applied in a sliding window kind of way. So you get N tokens in, you get one token out, and then that token out gets included in the tokens in for the next iteration. And then you get another token out and you keep repeating this idea forward until you reach some stopping condition and, and your model is done. You're done generating the code that you, that you wanted to generate. Um, so that's basically how, why you get so much text out. Uh, you may also be thinking, so is this deterministic? So if I train a model and um, I give it the same sequence of tokens twice, do I get the same token out? And you don't. Uh, these models are actually not deterministic. And, uh, and the, re the reason why they're not is that actually there's one little piece that is additional to what I'm showing the slide uh, in how these models work, which is there's, what they return is actually not a token out, but a probability distribution of all the tokens. So basically a distribution that assigns a certain probability to each possible token that it can generate. Um, and so then you go and you sample from that distribution to get that token out. And the way you sample can be controlled with the temperature and the top P uh, commands when you're using the playground in ChatGPT. Okay, so now uh, this idea that I'm showing here, you know, the tokens in, and tokens in, one token out, this is really just an idea. It's not an algorithm, right? There's no code, I'm not explaining code. It's an idea. And this idea has been implemented in many different ways throughout history. It's certainly not a new idea. So in the 70s, we had hidden Markov models, and I'm just going to call them HMMs. So HMMs are Markov processes, and the mathematical definition of a Markov process is that when it's generating a token out, it only looks at the token immediately before it. Uh, so that means, for example, if you input the quick brown fox jumps over the, 
the HMM is going to only be able to look at the. It's not going to look at anything that comes before it. So it's probably going to predict something like, I don't know, person or shoe or whatever, but it's probably not going to predict lazy, which is what you might expect. Then in the 90s, Ngram models came along and uh, they largely fixed this issue because you could actually input N tokens in. However, this N was pretty low, and so we were pretty limited in what we could do. And so then in the 2000s, neural networks came in and they became very popular and they, uh, they re increased on the size of the number of tokens that you can pass into the model. And at the time, the neural networks that were popular were LSTMs and GRUs, which are types of RNNs. These uh, ne neural networks had an issue, though, which was they could have exploding gradients or vanishing gradients, where the gradients of the model uh, would actually become very large, like infinity, or go down to zero uh, when the network was too long. And when you have that issue, then you just couldn't train. The, the network just wouldn't learn. Uh, and so then in 2017, transformers came along, and they fixed a lot of issues. They increased the size of n that the model can take in, they uh, fixed the, the stability issues, so the, the exploding gradients and vanishing gradients that the neural networks had. And they also introduced an algorithm that is parallelizable, so it works a lot better in the GPU. And transformers are based on this idea of attention or the attention mechanism, which you may, you may have heard about that. And so what this means is that the model is able to pay more attention to some inputs than others. So for example, um, for example, in this uh, sentence, she went to the store and the model, the model might predict bought. But to predict that verb, bought, um, the, the tense, you know, the past tense of that verb comes from the second token, from went. So they both have to match. And so the model will be able to understand that and will probably pay more attention <laughs> to the word went than, than it will to the word end, even though the word end is further back, is one of the first tokens that will come in. So this is kind of like the basic idea of attention. And transformers and attention, they're very important uh, because they're still what is being used today in GPT models by OpenAI. So now let's look at the latest three models that OpenAI uh, put out. Uh, so we have GPT 3.5, which they all use transformers. <laughs> they all use transformers. And, uh, and transformers, uh, they really were, they were introduced in 2017, as I said, in this paper called Attention is All You Need, which was written by Google. Uh, and so then ChatGPT is based on the base model from Chat from GPT 3.5, and then it does a layer of fine tuning on top of that. Uh, and so it fine tunes that model with conversational data. And so why does it need to do that? Well, because 3.5 was really, uh, it's, a, it's a completion type model, which means that you type a few words, and then the model is able to generate words that come after, that are likely to come after. Uh, while ChatGPT is a model that is trained for conversations. So it, it has a little bit of a different pattern. Um, and so then ChatGPT was also further trained with reinforcement learning with human feedback. And so the way that this algorithm works is, is the following. You give it a, the LLM an input, and you get two different outputs back. And then you get a, a human that will rank those outputs. And then the ranking of the human will be fed back into the model and the weights of the model will be changed to incorporate the human preference, basically. And um, this technique is based on this paper here that is, we, I just call it the InstructGPT paper, and that came out in 2022, and it was uh, written by OpenAI. And then finally, the latest, the very latest model that is out, GPT-4, um, is it, it's based on an entirely new base model. And it also uses reinforcement learning with human feedback. And if you see here, just before, just below the titles, you'll see the names of the models uh, that you might, that if you're using code or even the playground, these are the models that you would choose if you want to select each of these different types of models that OpenAI put out. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching.